We're going to go over one last example of optimization problem where we're trying to optimize the dimension of a soda can. So more specifically, we are trying to design a cylindrical soda can that is going to hold 12 fluid ounces as a usual can. And because fluid ounces are not, um, not very practical to relate to length, um, the conversion of 12 fluid ounces is 355 milliliters, which is the same as 355 cubic centimeters. Now suppose that the bottom and top of the can are twice as thick as the side. If you look at a, a standard soda can, this is indeed the case that the top and the bottom are um, quite a bit thicker than the side. And we want to find the dimensions of the can that minimize the amount of material used. Of course, there are practical reasons to try to minimize the amount of material used um, because um, what you spend on building one can essentially depends on how much material you use to build that can. Okay, so we're trying to design a cylindrical can. So here is a cylinder and we want to find the dimensions that minimize the amount of material used. So we need to introduce variables for the dimensions and for a cylinder dimensions are the radius of the circular base and the height. Now we're looking for dimensions that minimize the amount of material. So if we want to minimize the amount of material we need to in terms of these dimensions we need to express this amount of material in terms of the dimension. The first observation is that the amount of material used is going to be proportional to the surface area but we're going to have to also take into account the fact that top and bottom are thicker than the side. Okay, So let's try to see what is the surface area of this um, cylinder. We have the top is a disk of radius r and the surface area of a disk is pi r squared. Similarly, the bottom is also a disk of radius r, and therefore its surface area is also pi r squared. But because top and bottom are twice as thick as the side, we are going to count the surface area twice for top and bottom, and once for the side. So I'm going to multiply this surface area for top and bottom by 2. And now we need to look at the side. Okay, the side, let's look at this animated picture here. You see that a rectangle can be folded into a cylinder and a cylinder can be unfolded into a rectangle. This is if the cylinder is open on top and bottom. So here if we open our cylinder along this uh, red edge, for instance, what we obtain if we unfold it is a rectangle whose red side here is H and the blue side here corresponds to unfolding the circle therefore what I get for the length of this blue edge is the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r if the circle has radius r. So the surface area for this rectangle is a product of the dimensions 2 pi r by h. So this is the contribution of the side to the amount of material. In other words, for this amount of material I have something that is proportional to 4 pi r square plus 2 pi r h. Now the problem is this is a function of two variables and I want to minimize this function of two variables so as usual, I'm going to try to use a constraint in order to transform this function in, of two variables into one of one variable only. So first we need to specify what the constraint is. And the constraint is that the can is to hold 12 fluid ounces, or in other words, 355 cubic centimeters. What does that mean? That means that the volume of the cylinder, which is the surface area of the circular base, as always, pi r square multiplied by the height, so it's pi r square h. So this volume of the cylinder, pi r square h, has to be equal to 355 cubic centimeters. 
So that gives us h in terms of r, specifically h is 355 divided by pi r squared. So now we can substitute in the expression for a, the expression we have for h in terms of r, and we obtain 4 pi r squared plus 2 times 355 is 710 pi r divided by pi r squared. Now of course in this fraction we can simplify by pi and simplify by r and we get 4 pi r squared plus 710 divided by r. Now we want to minimize this function on the open interval 0 infinity. Why on this open interval 0 infinity? Because certainly r has to be positive because it's one of the dimensions. It cannot be 0 because this function is not defined at 0 because we divide by r. And there's no clear bound on how large r can be because we could imagine that r becomes very small, that we have a can with a very small radius but that is very tall. Or, on the other side, we could imagine that r is very large, we have a very large radius but the can is as a height that is very small. Of course, uh, these would not be very practical and we hope that the optimal can turns out to be um, practical as well in terms of holding the can in your hand. So we want to find the minimum of the function on this interval, so we're going to study the function. And to do that, uh, we start with the derivative, looking for critical values. Derivative of 4 pi r square, here the variable is r, so we differentiate with respect to r. So derivative of 4 pi r square is 8 pi r. And derivative of 710 over r is negative 710 over r square, because 1 over r is r to the negative 1, so when you differentiate, you get negative r to the negative 2. In other words, negative 1 over r square. So this is 0 when 8 pi r is 710 over r square. Multiplying both sides by r square, we get that r cube is 710 over 8 pi, or in other words, 355 over 4 pi. Now the cubic root is a one-to-one -one function, so this is equivalent to r being equal to the cubic root of 355 over 4 pi. And if you plug that in a calculator, you'll find approximately 3.04 centimeters, so essentially 3 centimeters. So what we have seen is that the derivative of the function is positive when r is greater than this critical value cubic root of 355 over 4 pi. In the previous slide we focused on when a prime is 0, but really uh, you can easily see that a prime is positive when r is greater than this critical value. So the interpretation, as you can see here, in terms of increase and decrease, is that a is decreasing from 0 to this critical value for the radius and then increasing. And therefore, the function a has an absolute minimum for the radius of cubic root of 355 over 4 pi, and that's in centimeters. That means that the can, using the minimum amount of material as radius equal to this critical value, which is approximately 3 centimeters. To get the other dimension, the height, we can just use a constraint again, giving the height h in terms of r, so I plug the value cubic root of 355 over 4 pi in this and get for the height approximately 12.2 centimeters. Now, if you go in your fridge and pick a soda can and um, measure approximately the radius and height of your soda can, you're going to see that it is indeed very close to 3 cm in radius and 12 cm in height for the standard soda can. Of course, uh, one of the reasons is that indeed this is what minimizes the amount of material you use and um, of course for a person who um, Built this sort of can, there is a reason to try to amount to to minimize the amount of material used. This is not exactly the same because a standard soda can is not an exact cylinder because the bottom is not flat. As you can see, uh, there is a, a different surface for the, the the bottom of the soda can, and this is in fact 
this surface is a solution to another kind of optimization problem, but this is another story. But if we go with a rough approximation of the problem, we found the best soda can, and not too surprisingly, the standard soda can that we find in life is essentially the um, optimal solution to our optimization problem. So now it's time for you to do some homework before you turn to the sample quiz and the quiz.